Hi. Hi, class. So I'm going to uh, use the ink a little bit for you now just to show you how to kind of draw with it a little bit. Um, I did the demonstration where I just did how the ink works. What I've done here is I set up kind of like a quick little idea sketch of a self-portrait. I'm going to draw over that. I, um, you know, I used a variety of tools. I used, you know, a cloth, a cloth to rub it a little bit and spread it. I've got different shades of it, so you can notice that. Now I'm going to lay some lines over the top of it. I also brought along some white chalks that actually might come in handy later. Um, a chalk and a stick and a chalk and a uh, Conti crown. So I might use those a little bit once I get a little bit darker with it. I'm gonna start drawing with a bamboo quill. That's the cheapest means by which you can actually use ink and draw with it. Um, these things are like a dollar a piece. And I'm gonna actually draw on top of that which I've already put down. And give you an idea about how to go about using ink. And in this case, I'm using ink over tone. You know, I put a little bit of a tone down. I've got a couple different choices for my inks. I'm going to do slow down a little bit now. I'm going to stop talking and slow down a little bit and try to arrange things better by finding points. Like that's where my forehead starts. The edge of my head the edge of my hair, down through there. Height of my ear, height of my ear. Shape around the side of my head. And at any point, if I wish, I can just jump back in with the brush and paint a little bit of it if I want. The more layers you add, the darker it gets. And you want to go slow at first. I was better off if I would have left this a little bit lighter. But I really wanted you to see what it looks like when you have ink already on the paper. And I'm going to do another drawing next to it where there's no ink on the paper. Now notice that right here, where I put some lines where I'm going to just blend them into the background by putting a wash over the top of it. And I'm gonna leave my face on that side exposed so that my background is actually darker. You can dry it out certain ways if you wish. One way would be with just by rubbing a cloth, picking some of it up. This is decent watercolor paper that I'm working on. It's off of a thing called a block. Now this cloth I have chosen actually has a texture to it. I can actually create lines with it if I choose. That could come in handy. 
or maybe not. I kind of like that just as a thing. Um, I have other options too. I have a metal quill, which is a more refined line. It's got a little bit of a double line, what picked up a little bit of the paper. So it got a little bit thicker than I intended it. I gotta go get more ink now. And I'm doing hatching right now, and a lot of it. I'm just using, you know, ink straight out of the container. Building my lines. By laying one series of lines over the top of another, going at it from different directions, thinking about the way that the actually my face actually moves. Like this is a, a frown line. And that's the way that it curves. I may want to actually go in a slightly different direction describing it, where I want to make it a little bit darker. So the lines themselves look different where you put them over white, or in this case, off white, they look different than where you put them, when you put them over an area which you've actually already toned. They want to make them a little lighter.
So my head's curved, my forehead is curved around that spot. So what I'm actually doing is I'm actually starting to curve my lines a little bit. You can just draw straight lines over your background and get, get a form back there if you want. If it's wet, it's going to do something slightly different than if it's dry. It'll spread a little bit since this is still wet. Sorry about that, that makes me mad. So you can use line over white and build, build shadow just like this, or you can put it, you can use wash. To kind of like create a tone and then draw across the tone. So that's a metal quill. I tend to like a metal quill. I mean, I can draw lines with a stick. If I chose to. They may not be as tight as the metal coil, but once I get going, I'll bet you I could figure it out. You just gotta figure out how to, how to touch it and what, what direction it's gonna spread when you do. the other end of this stick the snapped end yeah it's a little more scratchy so I think the better way to go about this would be the uh, finer finer tip for the flesh and the pattern I might use the stick. The bamboo is pretty good, but it's also a little bit wider of a line. And it's also going across something that's a little damp, and when it's a little damp, it actually spreads as it goes. Once you put some of this ink down, you can also do this, which I think is kind of an interesting mark. So I have wet ink right here around that edge. I can pull it, move it, tie it into the background.
can make more express more expressive marks if you wish. Doesn't have to be always straight lines. This this is the beauty of this material is it allows you to get a little more gestural with it. I'm actually starting to like this. So now you're using a flat brush. It's called a flat because it is. Um, there are other types of brushes that you can use. You can also use a bristle brush. This is a bamboo brush, which is more of a round. It doesn't have as good a control as my flat. It's a good cheap option though. If you don't want to spend any money on a brush, this thing works. So this brush is probably about 15, 20 bucks. This brush is probably a dollar. I don't like that spot. I want that out. So I can just tap it out. It'll dry light. Um, let's go back to the nose. There's a deep shadow right here, which I might actually go get some straight black for. And I did. I don't know if I want it that deep. The nostrils over deep. So if I want to take that back a little bit. So I put down black ink and now I want to get rid of some of it. So I just put water on top of it. And I will move it around. I'm just going to grab, I grabbed the tissue, which was nearest to me. And I could just pull that back a little bit if I want. And it's not nearly as dark. And then on top of it, I could even add a little bit more water and it'll thin it some more. Generally, this stuff dries lighter than when you put it down. One of the big surprises that comes with uh, working with water mediums, they gener generally dry lighter. Now that's a bigger area than I want, but I'm not worried about it at this point. Once again, I can pull that back and make it a little bit lighter if I wish. No harm, no foul. but it's starting to take shape a little bit, literally. So that's how I would start with the ink if I wanted to put a wash down first, okay? But like I said, you can just do, you can just work on top of the white paper with these things and you can use a variety of lines. You can work quick. You can work slow and deliberate. So that's a, a little bit of a primer on how to start with ink.